Greetings, family. So I'm here today with an update on the passport situation. Um, just like one of my uh, subscribers stated in the message section that it should be here shortly. Uh, in fact, it did come shortly and I was very excited about that. So I just wanted to share, um, and I thought I might share, share some details as far as what uh, your passport should consist of in case some of you don't know. Like I think it's wrong to assume that uh, people actually know all about the uh, passport process. So I'm going to show you some things. So this is my old passport. It came in the mail today, right? And this passport, as you can see, they put holes in it. When it's expired, I guess they're letting people know that it's no good. That's my old passport picture in there. Um, your passport would have your first and last name, this, the country that you're from, your date of birth, the date your passport was issued. So mine was issued August 19th of 2011, and it expires August 18th of 2021, right? Um, the other thing is it has, I guess, some of the countries that I've been to in here. So 2011, you see my stamps for uh, Dominican Republic. I don't know if you all can see that or not, but um, my stamps for Dominican Republic, and this looks like, let's see what country is this? Uh, this is for Barbados for 2018. So Barbados is in here. That's the first time I went to visit the actual island that my uh, father's people are from, the paternal side of my family. Um, and then after that, we have the visa for the Gambia. You see my visa for the Gambia here. And this visa says that it was issued through Washington, DC. Uh, it has my birth date, my nationality, my passport number, my visa number is on here as well. And it says I have this for multiple entries states it was issued July 20th of 21, right? 2021, because if you all recall, I was going to make a trip to the Gambia. Um, I believe it was in August I was trying to go and they canceled my flight. Uh, and then I just decided to go to, uh, let me see, to Belize and they canceled that flight. So this was like at the height, you know, the whole COVID mix up situation. Um, and so nevertheless, this was issued July 21st and it expires July 21st of 2025. That's what I was saying that I thought I had some time on it. So it doesn't expire until July of 2025. Um, and this, you'll see an official seal from the Gambia on there, the silver seal right here under my picture, right? So let's see, and then the next one. Um, then they have me leaving from the Gambia, December 24th, right? Oh, no, that, that, is that me? I'm sorry. This is Sierra Leone that has me leaving December 24th because I spent Christmas in the Gambia. So you see Sierra Leone has a little stamp that has me leaving their country, December 24th. Um, and then you'll see... It said you'll have the Gambia. It says seen on January 10th. It's my departure date. They have a Gambia visitor's pass permitted to enter and reside for 30 days, December 24th. And they show that my, um, that employment is prohibited on here. You can see there's a stamp that says that right there, that I'm, I'm not, this is not a work visa. This is a visa for a visitor. Um, and then it has December 17th, 2020, Kotoka International Airport. So that's Ghana immigration stamping my passport here as I'm going in and out the country. And then we have December 3rd, 2020. I think this is when I left. Um, let me see. I arrived in Ghana. So you have my in and my out for Ghana here. And then you have the visa for the for Ghana, 
see it's yellow and green let's look at how that looks compared to Sierra Leone I'm sorry to Gambia so Gambia is, is a little different you see it has red blue and green and the pictures on the side right so you actually get to see what they look like once they're in your passport this one was for Ghana and it's yellow and green and it has they have a stamp right and then they have another sort of logo up here I guess that's the country seal but it's not like a raised seal like the one uh, I just showed you it states um, that it was issued in DC right um, and this was good for three months so this one actually this was issued November 25th and I paid $60 and this was issued in Washington DC and this was good for three months so this would expire let's see they gave it to me November so November to December December to January January February. it would expire February February of 2021 so we know that that one's expired now let's see I was looking to see if there was anything in here for Sierra Leone I have a feeling that I feel like Sierra Leone gave me the visa um, it was a piece of paper I think theirs was a piece of paper for Sierra Leone and I have that somewhere because I know I have it for myself and my son right so yeah that's it I don't have a whole lot going on in my passport um, although I have been to uh, quite a few countries I lived in England for six months from let's see January of 1989 to like July of 1989 um, so I've been to Jamaica several times. I stayed in Negril. I stayed in Montego Bay. I've been to Trinidad Tobago because I had some people there and it was right before carnival. And that was around the time when I was in law school. So I remember that because I had to get back for exams. But I did go to the party at the firehouse. Um, and I, like we said, you already saw the ones I've been to. But let's see, Trinidad Tobago, uh, Bahamas. Carousel, C U R A C, is it C? C U R A C A O, right? I've been to Carousel. wasn't really, you know, wasn't really something I chose. It was a trip that I was taken on. I didn't care for that too much. I noticed a lot of um, maybe these people were Portuguese or Swedish tourists. I'm not really sure, but I didn't care for that island at all. It was very expensive, and I didn't really care for the food. Um, let's see where else oh I've been to Spain um, you know I had friends in Spain one of my uh, good friends for many years um, they actually just celebrated their 20 I think 23rd anniversary I was in their wedding when they went to Spain I um I went to Spain to visit them I believe I went twice took them food from the States and hung out with them and got to visit Spain um, you know I've been to Germany when I did some modeling back in the day there was a one of the uh, designers cousins so I, I went to Germany for a little while with one of my friends and then we went to Amsterdam um, and Amsterdam was really cool of course I liked Amsterdam it had a really good like art music type vibe to it I actually met a jazz musician from New Orleans there so that was a really cool visit um, and let's see where else that's really, I don't know. I think that's it outside of the States. Like I said, Spain, England, Jamaica. Oh, I've been to Mexico. I didn't really, you know, Mexico was cool, but I don't know. I didn't, I wasn't really feeling Mexico. I'm not big on beans, like really early in the morning. Um, the fruit was good. The juices were good, but I, I didn't, I wasn't really feeling Mexico like that. I did Mexico once. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That may be it as far as places I've gone. As far as in the States, you know, a place or places associated with the States, right? I've done uh, Hawaii. Hawaii was beautiful. I went to several islands. One of my, once again, good friends was stationed there. One of my girlfriends from college and then my other girlfriend was getting married there. So it was amazing just to get to see everybody all at once. Um, so Hawaii was a blessing. And it was beautiful too, expensive. It was pricey. Um, Hawaii, let's see, I've done Minneapolis, Missouri, 
um, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Connecticut, Delaware, Massachusetts, um, Nebraska, many years ago, actually when I ran track, right? And I had come to Philly long before I even decided to live in PA because when I was in high school, I ran track. So I ran at Penn Relays. So yeah, I've had quite a bit of traveling, you know, to places that I didn't need a passport for. But, um, you know, it's just really important to get outside of your box and know that the world is waiting for you and that you have a passport book to fill up, right? So like I said, this was um, the old passport, which I'm going to carry because my visa is in here and my visa for the Gambia does not expire until July 21st of 2025. So that's a blessing. So I did get it back. You know, I was worried. So when I travel this time, um, I will be taking my old passport. And I did want to stress that your old passport has or your small passport, right? The one they usually offer you has, let's see, 28 pages, right? I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's a 28 down here, very faintly, right at the bottom. And the numbers, it tells you how many pages. Like, I don't know if we even ever pay attention to that. It's page numbers at the bottom, right? And then it has like um, historical, I guess, you know, sites, um, quotes throughout the passport. Did you all know that there are quotes throughout your passport? There are quotes throughout the passport. I don't think we pay attention to that, uh, which is interesting, right? Because it makes you wonder, does this stuff really apply to us? There are quotes throughout the passport from the presidents, right? First of all, let's go through it, right? Let's really go through it. So there's, when you open it, is your picture page there. You have your page that says, um, it's like pieces of statements from the declaration. So it says, um, and that, and the, and that government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth. That's a statement from Abraham Lincoln. It says the secretary of state of the United States of America hereby request all whom it may concern to permit the citizen national of the United States named herein, that would be me, to pass without delay or hindrance and in case of need to give all lawful aid and protection. Wow. So that's why this U.S. passport is so important, right? That's why everybody wants one because the statement's like that. Then they have the statement, um, it's almost like the pledge, right? We the people of the United States have that in here. I really feel like I should have put my glasses on y'all so I can give you better, um, better statements on here. So let's try this. It says, we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. And then when you sign, you're basically signing saying that you're going to live up to that statement. I can't tell you that I knew that when I was signing this, right? Because you're so busy just making sure you sign where you need to sign. You're not necessarily reading or taking the things um, to heart. So then they have personal data and emergency contact, which a lot of us don't fill out, but I will be filling this part out. Personal data and emergency contact for your protection. Complete the information requested below using pencil. Please keep these entries up to date. So you need to fill out your emergency contacts here, right? Then it says the bearer's foreign address. So wherever you're going to be staying at, they want that person's foreign address. In case of emergency, notify the nearest American embassy or consulate or the State Department. And then they have it, I believe it's in Spanish underneath. Yeah, this looks like it's in Spanish and French. And then they, you're supposed to put the name, the address and everything under there as well. Important information regarding your passport. This passport is not valid unless it's signed by the bearer in the area designated on page three. And yeah, that was the page where I signed is page three right here. And that was page four where they asked for the emergency contacts and then 
page five is where they're telling you what you need to do. They're telling you that this is U.S. government pop property, right? So you thought the passport was yours, didn't you? The passport is a property of the United States. It must be surrendered upon demand made by an authorized representative of the United States government. Loss or theft or destruction of a passport should be reported immediately to local police authorities. Um, it says Washington, D.C., or if you're overseas, to the nearest U.S. embassy. Alteration or mutilation of a passport. This passport must... This passport must not be altered or mutilated in any way. Alteration could make the passport invalid and, if willful, may subject you to prosecution. Title 18, U.S. Code, Section 1543. And then they have, they go on with a section, pages 6 and 7, where they talk about, um, here they have... I'm sorry, y'all. My phone is dying and I'm trying to keep my battery going. Okay. Travel information, um, important information. The principle of free governments adheres to the American soil it is embedded in, immovable as its mountains. That's another quote from Daniel Webster. Travel information, health vaccinations, health insurance, your passport, emergency contact, avoid violating foreign laws, illegal drugs, Safety, be mindful of security threats, do not leave your luggage unattended, disasters and catastrophes. Like there's a list of instructions here. It tells you who to call, why you should call them. If these things happen, um, do not carry packages abroad or to the U.S. at the request or as a favor to any stranger. See, that's deep, right? Illegal drugs. So it goes on. It goes on to tell you what your rights are and what your rights are not. Um, now there's another quote here that says, let us raise a standard to which the wise and the honest can repair. Some of it seems like hypocrisy coming from these people, but nevertheless, I just thought y'all should know the statements that are in here. That, that one was by George Washington. Then there's another statement that says, created equal, that they are endowed by their creator or life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is an excerpt from the De Declaration of Independence. We have a great dream. It started way back in 1776, and God grant that America will be true to her dream. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, I never knew that was in here. The blessing is that it's on the page that my Ghana visa is on and that my Gambia stamps are on. Look at that. That's the Martin Luther King uh, quote. Wow. Here's another quote. This quote is from J.F. Kennedy, and this has the, you see the, like I said, they have famous historical sites in here. This is Martin Luther King, uh, I'm sorry, John F. Kennedy. This one says, let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe, in order to assure the arrival and the success of liberty. Then we have one that says, this is a new nation based on mighty continent of boundless possibilities. This is a new nation based on a mighty continent of boundless possibilities. Theodore Roosevelt. Whatever America hopes to bring to pass in the world must first come to pass in the heart of America. Dwight Eisenhower. For this is what America is all about. So, you know, they got the cowboys in here because somehow that's historical to them. Mind you, let me go back to the page of Martin Luther King because I'm going to tell you, I don't remember what the what the historical site was. Yeah, that looked like it might have been some cowboys. I see an eagle on one page and some mountains, but my Ghana visa is covering it. So there's not even any a black historical figure in here so far. Just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, so we were at uh, we were at this quote with the cowboys. For this is what America is all about. It is the uncrossed desert and the unclimbed ridge. It is the star that is not reached and the harvest sleeping and the unplowed ground. Is our world gone? We say farewell. Is a new world coming? We welcome it and we will bend it to the hopes of man. Lyndon B. Johnson. May God continue the unity of our country as the railroad unites the two great oceans of the world. 
This was inscribed on the Golden Spike promontory point in 1869. This is where they show the railroad crossing across the, the U.S. We send thanks to all the animal life in the world. They have many things to teach us as people. We are glad they are still here and we hope it will always be so. Excerpt from the Thanksgiving address Mohawk version. Sounds like they stole something from the Native Americans, from our Native American kin, uh, kinfolk, we should say. Um, and put that in here. And all they show is a daggone totem pole and a bear. I can't, y'all. <sighs> the cause of freedom is not the cause of a race or a sect, a party, or a class. It is the cause of humankind, the very birthright of humanity. This is by Anna Julia Cooper. Um, and then they show Statue of Liberty. And I guess this is the book that is in the Statue of Liberty's hand. It sounds good. You know, all of it sounds really good, but what you write down and what is perpetrated is two very different things. Now, in the last page, we have the satellite showing with the planets, and it says, every generation has the obligation to free men's minds for a look at new worlds, to look out from a higher plateau than the last generation. And this looks like a Japanese last name, Ellison S. Onizuka. This document contains sensitive electronics for best performance. Do not bend, perforate, or expose to extreme temperatures. So electronics, of course, would be the barcodes that have to be detected when they're scanned, right? In case you weren't aware of that. Restrictions on importation of goods and services, customs and border protection, agriculture, U.S. taxes, all U.S. citizens working and residing abroad are required to file and report on their worldwide income. Consult IRS Publication 54 Tax Guide. Wow, y'all, I would read that section. Social Security, write to the Social Security Administration office um, or consult about receiving payments while outside the U.S. Did y'all even know that was in your passports? I don't know that you did. I know I didn't. Exact website addresses are subject to change. And that is on the very last page of the passport. So please, y'all, like, really, the passport book is, in fact, a book. Y'all need to read this and really know, like, what's inside of here. Because I don't know that any of us really pay attention to this stuff. We're so busy hoping that it's processed and that we're able to use it. I don't know that we're really using it and paying attention. All right, y'all. So my new book has 52 pages. My last book had 28 pages. Um, and you all can see, I have to do the emergency section. I have these sections with the important information telling me uh, rights and responsibilities. Um, I talked about, let's see, it looks like a lot of the same quotes are on these pages, but this is some of the pictures that are in the passport book. Looks like the Liberty Bell and the Declaration of Independence. Um, this one has, you know, I guess America's conquest on the oceans um, and it has a quote again from the Declaration of Independence. The one that had Martin Luther King Jr.'s quote was a page, it has buffaloes. Remember I was saying something about mountains, it had buffaloes. This is my page that's covered with the other visa. Um, and the artwork again is just, it's Caucasian people. So let's go past page 28, because the last book ended on 28, right? The so-called founding fathers, but we know that they shouldn't probably be up there, right? We need some Africans and Native Americans as the founding fathers. Page 28, they show like an island, right? Um, and this is someone called E.B. White. Liberty is never out of bounds or off limits. It spreads wherever it can capture the imagination of men. That is profound, right? Because if liberty can catch the imagination of men, then that sounds like if we can convince people that there's freedom in this great place, they will believe it. All right, y'all. Samuel Adams, when a glorious, what a glorious morning for our country. And this is, again, with the Liberty Bell. It looks like they might just repeat. They do. They repeat the, the pictures throughout the passport. They're very faint, so I don't know if people ever really even paid attention to them. But yeah, these are the pages that your stamps go on top of. They repeat, all the artwork is repeated. 
And I do not see anything in here that represents all the diverse groups of the United States. All I see are animals, statues, boats, trains, farmers, which are Caucasian, the forefathers, Statue of Liberty, and cowboys. Looks like they need to work on that, don't you think? Nevertheless, I wanted to give y'all the update. I hope that was informative and educational because it was for me. So I had to share it with y'all. Um, and just let you know, I got my visa. Have visa, we'll travel. Blessings, family. Talk soon.